Good morning, dear students. I'm glad to see you on my lecture. I hope that all are here and we are, can start to work. Please listen to the lecture, look to the pictures, and also maybe do some conspects because in explanation I'm also telling about important things. Let's start. There is an ancient Greek myth about Titanus Prometheus, a culture hero who was credited with the creating people from the clay. Uh, he stole fire from the Olympic gods and gave it to the people as a gift for their development and progress. Uh, Zeus, the king of Olympic gods, was very uh, angry and uh, decided to punish him. And immortal Prometheus was bound to the rock, and each day an eagle was sent to feed on his liver, uh, which would uh, then grow back overnight to be eaten again and again uh, next day. Uh, the ancient uh, Greeks uh, uh, often thought that the liver is the seat of human emotions. Uh, any case, even our um, ancient ancestors understood the importance of this organ for the life and its regenerative properties. In mythology, uh, over the time, uh, Prometheus was freed by Hercules. In reality, you will uh, save the livers and lives of your patients with yourself. So. Today's topic of our lecture is biochemistry of liver. Uh, please, small notes. Uh, it is more convenient for me uh, to give a lecture as a whole without interrupting for the breaks. So therefore, at any moment necessary for you, please uh, rest and then uh, make a pause uh, and then continue to work. Also, you can ask me questions in the general chat of the floor. I will try to answer them. So let's start. Today we are talking about very specific, very interesting organ uh, with the features of uh, metabolism, with the um, many functions. So let's talk about liver. The liver is a cone-like shaped dark reddish brown organ uh, that is located in the upper part of the handwrite right Mm, abdominal cavity under the diaphragm and near the stomach, uh, hand of pancreas, uh, kidney, and intestine. To supply blood to the liver, there are two distinct sources. Oxygenated blood flows in from the hepatic abdomen. Nutrient-rich blood flows in from the hepatic portal vein. The liver holds about 13% of the body's blood, supplied at any given moment. All the blood from stomach and intestines passes through the liver. More than 500 vital functions have been identified with the liver. Some of more well-known functions include production of bile uh, that will help uh, for digestion of fats in the small intestine, Conversion of excess of glucose to glycogen for storage and maintenance of glucose level in the blood. Uh, regulation of blood level of amino acids, which are building blocks of proteins. Production of certain proteins for blood plasma, regulating blood clotting and resisting infections by making immune factors or removing toxins. Production of triacylglycerols, cholesterols, phospholipids and also of proteins for their transport. Uh, conversion of poisonous uh, to less toxic compounds, detoxification of, ure of ammonia by synthesis of urea, uh, metabolism of nucleotides, uh, clearance of bilirubin, uh, clearance of blood from drugs, and then, and then, and then. A knowledge about specific structure of liver uh, helps to understand this polyfunctional character of this organ and uh, some features of metabolic metabolism of substances. Uh, the functional part 
of uh, liver tissues, parenchyma, is made up of around 80% of hepatocytes. Uh, the term parenchyma is a leading word from Greek uh, that means visceral flesh. Uh, ancient anatomists used it referring to functional parts of organs in contrast to term st stroma, uh, which refers to the structural tissues of organs that are usually made from connective tissue. Other cells uh, of liver are represented by endothelia sites, of course, uh, different uh, satellite sites and uh, dendritic cells, uh, macrophages, capricorns, and then and then and then. Uh, the um, pyramidal section of the liver, liver segment, is in connection with so called hepatic triad, the branch of portal vein of the second order. Um, its own branch of hepatic artery and corresponding branch of the hepatic duct. Each uh, eight liver segments consist of uh, 1,000 lobules, small lobes. Um, these lobules are connected with small ducts by canaliculi. And then they connect uh, with the larger ducts to form the common hepatic duct. Uh, the common hepatic duct transport the bile made by liver cells uh, to the gallbladder and uh, then to the uh, duodenum, first part of intestinum, via the common bile duct. Let's summarize our knowledge about uh, functions of liver. This is, of course, participation in digestion uh, and distribution of nutrients. It's a participation in all types of metabolism, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, nucleic acids, excretory function, uh, destruction of toxic substances, both formed in body or foreign, and depot, of course, of blood, glycogen, iron, vitamins, etc. Uh, look to the composition of bile. Uh, the greatest quantity is represented by bile acids, but of course, put attention that phospholipids are also represented uh, with significant quantities. Minor comp components are cholesterol, bilirubin, proteins, and inorganic compounds. It's necessary to tell that uh, when bile acids are secreted to the intestinal, they can be reabsorbed and through the portal veins, through the portal system, return to the bile and be secreted again. Uh, it is named enterohepatic circulation, and each molecule of uh, bile acid can circulate seven, ten times, but after this, of course, they will be excreted with the feces. Bile acids are synthesized in liver from cholesterol, and our basic primary bile acid is cholic acid. Um, after this, in liver, it can be conjugated with glycine and taurine. I remind you that taurine is also formed from amino acid cysteine uh, to form glycocholic acid and taurocholic acids. Up, after secretion, all of these uh, acids, uh, cholic can be converted to deoxycholic acid, conjugated to um, glycodeoxycholic acid and taurodeoxycholic acids uh, under the action of microorganisms in our intestine. So let's summarize the role of bile acids uh, secreted to the intestines. This is to emulsify fats, facilitating the action of lipase. It's to activate pancreatic lipase. It's to participate in the absorption of fatty acids, monoacid, glycerols, and cholesterol by forming uh, with them hydrophilic complexes, micelles. Uh, bile acids also activate the motility of small intestinum, stimulate the production of mucus and gastrointestinal hormones such as cholecystokinin and secretin. Uh, they prevent the adhesion of bacteria or protein segregates due to interaction with biliary tract epithelial cells. The bile ducts of healthy people are sterile. Bile activates also kinasogen turning it into enteropeptidase, enterokinase, which can activate trypsinogen, converting it to trypsin. So, 
that is uh, bile acids also necessary for the digestion of proteins. It, uh, they help. They help in this process. Let's discuss metabolism of carbohydrates in liver. Of course, this is glucose oxidation with energy production that in liver will be done by aerobic pathway, including three main stage glycolysis, conversion of pyruvate to acetyl-CoA, and then uh, citric acid cycle. I allow myself to remind you the general patterns of energy production in our body. At first, uh, complex mole molecules, uh, polymers, are coming to our gastrointestinal tract, uh, where they will be digested to more smaller molecules, and these small substrates will be absorbed and transported by blood to all of the cells. Intracellular. Uh, they will be involved into the reactions of catabolism. Not all of them will be uh, oxidative reaction, but we will put attention to them now. Part of reactions are oxidative when we are taking electrons from the substrates and it will lead to the formation of reduced coenzymes of dehydrogenases, NADH2, FADH2, which after this will be involved to the electron transport chain to the final receptor of the electrons, to oxygen, and then chemiosmotic potential will be formed, ATP will be synthesized. All of the process is named oxidative phosphorylation. There is only one other pathway how to obtain ATP in our body. These are reactions with macroergic substrates, it means with substrates that already contains macroergic bond, and if we have specific to these substrates transferase, with the help of this enzyme, we can obtain ATP directly near the substrate. Due to this, such a phosphorylation is named substrative phosphorylation or substrate level phosphorylation. So we can obtain ATP by oxidative phosphorylation or uh, substrative phosphorylation. In oxid aerobic oxidation of glucose, uh, we can find, we can separate three stages. This is aerobic glycolysis, where one glucose is converted to two pyruvic acids with production of six or eight ATPs. Uh, six or eight, it depends from the type of shuttle mechanisms, because uh, reduced coenzyme um, NADH2 is formed in cytosol during the glycolysis. In liver, uh, note that we have glycerol phosphate shuttle mechanism working, and due to this six ATP, we can produce in liver during the glycolysis. Then the second stage, my dears, very often in your answers you are forgetting about this very important stage. The quantity of produced energy is comparable with the uh, glycolytic energy production. So oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate or pyruvate dehydrogenetic reaction. In this reaction, two molecules of pyruvates are converted to two molecules of acetyl-CoA. It means activated two-carbon unit is formed to uh, come after this for citric acid cycle. Citric acid cycle is started from the reaction between acetyl-CoA and uh, oxaloacetate with formation of citrate, my dears. Between glycolysis and citric acid cycle, don't forget about pyruvate decarboxylation. And decarboxylation also, two molecules of uh, carbon dioxide here at this stage and go to the air. A third stage is a Krebs cycle, citric acid cycle, uh, where two acetyl uh, coenzyme A completely catabolized and four molecules of uh, carbon dioxide go away. Look, that this is the more rich with energy stage. Uh, it is possible to obtain uh, 24 ATP molecules here. Uh, very often you tell us uh, during your answers that after this respiratory chain starts to work. It's not completely correct. All three stages are combined with respiratory chain because in all of three these stages uh, reduced coenzymes of dehydrogenases are formed. So from aerobic glycolysis, from oxidative decarboxylation of pyruvate, from citric acid cycle, reduced coenzymes will uh, bring electrons to the electron transport chain to oxygen with production of ATP. So uh, all three stages contain reactions of uh, dehydrogenation. Dehydrogenation is equivalent of oxidation in our body. So 
uh, in addition to oxidation of uh, glucose, of course, metabolism of fructose and galactose can be performed in liver. And you remember that uh, enzymopathies of these uh, pathways can cause uh, diseases like galactosemia, fructose intolerance, and then. Uh, gluconeogenesis, the synthesis of glucose from uh, non-carbohydrate products, also very active, is performed by liver. And this is the second pathway, how to obtain glucose uh, during the starvation period. Pentose phosphate pathway. Put attention that this pathway is active in liver. Compare only 0.3% of glucose uh, can be converted by this pathway in muscles. In liver, nearly 3% of glucose will be oxidized by this alternative oxidative pathway to produce NADPH2, which is necessary for lipid synthesis and uh, antioxidant reactions, and with the production, production of um, ribose 5-phosphate for nucleic acids and nucleotide metabolism. Uh, glyco um, synthesis and degradation of glycogen, of course, the important processes that are performed in liver, um, and integration between um, gluconeogenesis and uh, glycogenolysis in liver is named core cycle. All of this process allows liver to do its main function in carbohydrate metabolism. Remember this, that the main function is to maintain the stable glucose concentration in the blood. Uh, the first reaction that can be done in any cell with glucose and in liver cell the same, this is phosphorylation of glucose and conversion it to glucose 6-phosphate. Uh, do you remember? In liver, for this reaction, we have isozyme of hexokinase, enzyme which is named glucokinase, and it differs from the hexokinase by the uh, several properties. You can see on the graph differences in the work of glucokinase and hexokinase. The main differences include difference in Michaelis constant. Put attention that Michaelis constant of glucokinase is near 10 millimol per liter. I remind you that Michaelis constant is uh, equivalent um, is uh, equal to the substrate concentration at which velocity reached half of maximum. So glucokinase will be active only at periods where concentration of glucose in portal vein will be higher than at norm. At norm, you know, it is near the highest uh, value is near 5.5 millimoles per liter. The Michaelis constant of hexokinase is significantly low, it's nearly 0.1 millimol per liter, and uh, this constant of Michaelis of uh, hexokinase allows for peripheral cells to take glucose uh, even in during the starvation between meals and then and then. Uh, also important that glucokinase is not inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate. The concentration of glucose 6-phosphate must be high in the liver cells because glucose 6-phosphate is used in liver cells not only uh, to be oxidized, but also for the conversion of glycogen. And uh, hexokinase, which is inhibited by glucose 6-phosphate, um, will regulate the uptake of glucose by other cells uh, at the level which is necessary only to their survival to um, normal rate of metabolism. So, glucose, after conversion to glucose 6-phosphate, after this can be directed to oxidative pathway, or can be used for glycogen synthesis, or for pentose phosphate pathway. Let's look what enzymes will determine the velocity of all of these metabolic ways. Uh, the first we named already, this is glucokinase that convert glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. Then, if uh, phosphoractokinase and pyruvate kinase will work, uh, aerobic oxidation will be started. These are two uh, more regulative enzymes of uh, aerobic glycolysis. Uh, 
And then uh, pyruvate is converted to acetyl CoA and go to citric acid cycle. There are several regulative enzymes for citric acid cycle, but the most important is isocitrate dehydrogenase. In excess of glucose 6 phosphate, uh, it is converted to glucose 1 phosphate by mutase, and then glycogen synthase use it for the glycogen synthesis. If necessary, to put glucose to the blood, glycogen phosphorylase will convert it back to the glucose 1-phosphate and then to the glucose 6-phosphate. Here we need special enzyme for dephosphorylation of uh, glucose 6-phosphate and conversion it to free glucose. Only free glucose can leave the cells. Phosphorylated monosaccharides cannot leave the cells. So we need enzyme which is named glucose 6-phosphatase. Uh, the, another pathway to obtain glucose, this is process of gluconeogenesis from non-carbohydrate products uh, that can be converted to pyruvate and then to oxaloacetate because we cannot obtain phosphorinol pyruvate from pyruvate directly. The last reaction of glycolysis is irreversible. Non-carbohydrate products like, like uh, lactic acid, like uh, glucogenic amino acids and glycerol can be converted to pyruvate then to oxaloacetate with the participation of pyruvate carboxylase. Elongation of pyruvate and synthesis of oxaloacetate is catalyzed by this enzyme. And finally, with the help of glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, glucose 6-phosphate can be converted to 6-phosphogluconic -phosphoglu acid and uh, go to pentosphosphate pathway that in addition to ribose 5-phosphate can produce big quantity of reduced NADP, NADPH2, for lipid synthesis in liver and for uh, participation in uh, antioxidant reactions to protect the lipids of membranes. Look to the enzymes involved into the synthesis of glycogen in the liver. In addition to uh, named uh, glucokinase, we need in mutase to convert glucose 6-phosphate to 1-phosphate and glucose 1-phosphate uridyl transferase that will uh, activate our glucose before incorporation of this uh, residue to the glycogen and elongation of glycogen. Uh, the most important enzyme is, of course, glycogen synthase, uh, but also we need in branching enzymes that will uh, transfer small parts of the linear part to form uh, one six alpha glycosidic bond between the uh, branches of glycogen. You know that the glycogen is a branching uh, homopolysaccharide. Degradation of glycogen is controlled by uh, phosphorylase. Um, phosphorylase is named phosphorylase because cut glucose in the view of phosphate with participation of phosphoric acid. It's uh, similar to the formation of name of the enzymes hydrolases. It's a cleavage of bone uh, with attachment of water. Then by mutase uh, it is converted to 6-phosphate and uh, we named already this enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase is necessary to cut phosphate group. Put attention that uh, this enzyme is absent in muscles. It is not expressed in muscles and due to this uh, glycogen which is synthesized in muscles uh, cannot be used to maintain level of glucose in blood. A total quantity of glycogen is higher in muscles because mass of muscles is higher than mass of liver of course. But only liver participating in the maintenance of blood level of glucose. Muscles are using glycogen or only for their cells to obtain energy during the contraction. Uh, in deficiency of these enzymes in, in liver, who remember uh, the special glycogenosis can be developed and uh, the name of this disease is von Gierke disease, the deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase. Uh, the symptoms will be uh, long periods of hypoglycemia without uptake of food and of course this is in hereditary disease and symptoms are started from the burning. It's a slow grow, uh, slow development, mental rate addition and sometimes even death. 
relationships between glycogenolysis in muscles during their contractions and gluconeogenesis in liver is named Cori cycle. Name it after authors who uh, described it and obtained it Nobel Prize for the works uh, about glycogen and enzymes. Uh, glycogen in muscles can be used as a source of energy and uh, during the anaerobic glycolysis the great quantity of lactate can be produced. Uh, the fate of this lactate is to be used for gluconeogenesis, but the most high potential for gluconeogenesis, of course, is in liver. So lactate is produced by blood to the liver, where it is used for the synthesis of glucose in the process of which is named gluconeogenesis. Uh, during the period of relaxation of muscles, it means, of course, then this glucose can be used both for synthesis of glycogen in liver or go with the blood return to the muscles where it can be used for the synthesis of glycogen and then for oxidation. So these relationships between glycogenolysis in muscles and gluconeogenesis in liver is named Cori cycle or glucose lactate cycle. The most important function of liver, we told this, is to maintain the stable glucose level in blood. And uh, we need to mention that uh, the most important two hormones that regulate this process, these are insulin and glucagon, two pancreatic hormones. Um, look and put attention once more that glucagon will stimulate uh, glucose synthesis and uh, ex um, export to the blood. So uh, degradation of glycogen and gluconeogenesis is under the action of glucagon. Glucose go away. It's a memory rule uh, to uh, remember what is the function of glucagon in carbohydrate metabolism. Insulin opposite will stimulate uh, usage of glucose for oxidation and for synthesis of glycogen in the liver. So insulin for other tissues, it's glucose go inside of the cells and inside of the cells, please go somewhere to oxidation or to glycogen. Insulin and glucagon helps uh, to uh, the liver to maintain level of glucose and supply all peripheral tissues and especially brain with glucose during the starvation period and between meals. Let's discuss about metabolism of lipids in the liver. Of course, lipolysis can be done in liver. Uh, lipolysis stages these are fatty acids, beta oxidation conversion them for, to acetyl CoA and then uh, oxidation of acetyl CoA in Krebs cycle and oxidation of glycerol. Uh, if you remember, glycerol must be phosphorylated, and after this, after dehydrogenation, it can be incorporated into the glycolytic pathway. But uh, more characteristic for liver, uh, anabolism of uh, lipids. Why? Because usual fuel for us is glucose, and of course, liver is taking glucose primary in our body by the portal vein after absorption in the intestine. Synthesis of triacylglycerols and phospholipids, important function of liver. Um, it includes the synthesis of fatty acids after carboxylation of acetyl-CoA and formation of melanyl-CoA. It is used for the synthesis of palmitate. Then uh, palmitic acid, if necessary, can be elongated, desaturated. Uh, this will be performed by microsomal enzymes. And then phosphorylated glycerols, activated glycerols, participate with the uh, fatty acids and uh, acyl coenzymes A transferase in the formation of subsequently phosphatidic acids and then phospholipids or triacylglycerols. Of course, liver um, cannot store the lipids. Um, we mentioned polyfunctional character of this organ. There is no place uh, for storage of liver. Of, of lipids in the liver uh, because many enzymes must work in, with a high velocity, other functions must be performed. So, liver is actively synthesizing lipids, but 
uh, must also organize their transport from the li liver to other peripheral cells and to adipose tissue where, for example, triacylglycerols can be stored. So li uh, liver must uh, synthesize uh, apolipoproteins, so special proteins, uh, to cover hydrophobic lipids, uh, to make them more soluble in blood st water stream, and uh, this very important uh, function we will a little bit detailable look a little bit later. Um, one more, of course, synthesis of cholesterol for membranes and formation of bile acids uh, directly in the liver. And ketone bodies formation. I will remind you that ketone bodies, uh, these are water-soluble compounds like uh, beta-hydroxybutyrate and uh, acetoacetate that are formed from uh, acetyl-CoA. In excess of this acetyl-CoA, in small quantity, liver normally is uh, synthesizing ketone bodies to supply um, our peripheral organs, uh, especially cardiac muscles, skeletal muscles, brain. Brain is not doing beta oxidation, but you can use uh, ketone bodies with the water soluble uh, form of acetyl CoA. It's more convenient uh, to give acetyl CoA for the peripheral cells than glucose, because glucose must be converted to acetyl CoA by many reactions. But it is not possible to do this all the time for liver. Uh, because ketone bodies can change the pH of blood, you must understand this. And uh, during the oxidation of uh, fatty acids, many a big quantity of acidic components can be formed. Due to this, we prefer use glucose normally, which is water soluble um, in comparison with lipids. And uh, ketone bodies are synthesized, but in small quantity. Uh, quantity of ketone bodies can be increased. Uh, only in case when glucose is not available for oxidation. This is uh, during the starvation, long starvation, and this is during the uh, diseases accompanied with the absence of insulin, like diabetes mellitus. But as I told you, uh, the um, one of the most important functions of liver in lipid metabolism, this is the synthesis and formation of lipoprotein particles. I want to remind you what are them, how do they construct it. In all lipoprotein particles in general, um, we have hydrophobic nucleus that is usually formed by triacylglycerols, absolutely hydrophobic lipids, and free cholesterol. Free cholesterol, partly, oh, uh, cholesterol esters. Free cholesterol can participate in the formation of hydrophilic uh, cover of the lipoproteins. Here we can see phospholipids, which are amphiphilic, and due to this can form uh, special cover for the hydrophobic nucleus and of course proteins. Proteins are water soluble and due to this they will help for all the particles to be more soluble in the blood. And uh, you remember that we are dividing all lipoproteins in um, different groups uh, in dependence from the quantity of proteins that are present in them and uh, composition of lipids. The first, the highest uh, type of um, lipoproteins, I remind you, up, is formed in intestine. These are chylomicrons that are formed by intestinal cells, and uh, they contain uh, biggest quantity of triacylglycerols uh, that are resynthesized uh, in enterocytes after the absorption of lipids from the gastrointestinal tract. Remnant chylomicrons after um, transportation of these triacylglycerols to peripheral tissues will be taken by liver and all other types of lipoproteins are formed in liver. Liver is changing the composition of lipoproteins and they obtain more and more proteins and uh, composition of lipids is changed. You see that the quantity of uh, uh, phospholipids is uh, increased, uh, quantity of cholesterol is increased, and finally, the quantity of protein is significantly increased in the high-density lipoproteins. Uh, they are not heterogenic, as you know, and uh, very low-density and low-density lipoproteins are uh, heterogenic. So function of liver uh, to synthesize apoproteins and to um, create correct balance between the components, lipid components of lipoproteins. This is a principal question in the formation of such a disease like um, atherosclerosis um, and different types of hyperlipidemia. 
Okay, mm, summarize the participation of liver in the mm, uh, protein metabolism. This, of course, uh, protein decomposition and uh, interconversion of amino acids um, by different reactions that can be done in liver, especially these are reactions of transdamination. Uh, um, it's a problem that direct demination uh, we can do only for glutamic acid uh, because other oxidases of L amino acids, uh, usually FMN and FAD containing, uh, are not working actively. Their optimum of pH is near 10 and they are working very bad. So, what to do? We had glutamate dehydrogenase that can easily deaminate glutamate, and all of the amino acids can be easily transaminated at first with alpha ketoglutarate, which is absolutely normal component of the hepatocytes, and only after this, uh, glutamate will be deaminated and ammonia will be uh, taken away. Reactions of transaminases also are very necessary for the synthesis of non essential amino acids, which after this will be used for the synthesis of proteins. Conversion of amino acids to low molecular weight nitrogen containing compounds. The liver is the center of the production of many very important substances which are still nitrogen containing. Uh, these are, for example, already mentioned today taurine for the um, creation of um, tauracolic acid. It also can be uh, first uh, stage of uh, creatine formation. Uh, this is uh, purine synthesis and then and then. Conversion of proteins into the uh, carbohydrates and lipids. This integration between the uh, all types of metabolism uh, very uh, good is visible especially in the action of liver. As we told glycerol from the uh, lipids can be incorporated into the uh, processes of gluconeogenesis also glucogenic amino acids from the proteins can be incorporated in this moment. In its order, for example, pyruvate uh, obtained from glucose can be used by reactions of transaminases for the synthesis of alanine if you did not obtain alanine. It's a bad example, but because alanine is uh, widely distributed in the dietary proteins. But anyway, uh, it's, it's a possibility to understand that we can uh, redirect carbon from the one type of organic compounds to another one. Uh, what we cannot synthesize, uh, remember, we cannot synthesize glucose from acetyl-CoA, unfortunately, and we cannot synthesize uh, so-called essential factors of the food. These are polyunsaturated fatty acids from the lipids, and these are essential amino acids. For the protein, it's principal because nearly half of amino acids are essential. Protein synthesis, of course. With the high velocity, proteins are synthesized in liver because uh, these are blood plasma. Of course, these are enzymes of uh, liver on, uh, own enzymes. And of course, these are blood plasma proteins, albumin, globulins. Between globulins, it is necessary to mention blood clotting proteins, diseases of liver very often uh, are accompanied by the disorder of blood coagulation. Um, and detoxication of ammonia, urea synthesis. This process absolutely unique for the liver and uh, uremia uh, can be done, uh, can be caused uh, by the hyperproduction of urea, of course, uh, in uh, rare cases. But more often is uh, created by the uh, kidney disease and uh, absence of possibility to filtrate. Uh, urea to the urine. Uh, ammoniemia, this is the absolute sign of liver disease because if ammonia is not detoxified, it's a sign of uh, problem with the factory where it is normally synthesized. So look to this unique for liver process, urea synthesis, which is partly uh, will be done in mitochondria, partly in cytosol of liver sites. Uh, uh, liver cells, uh, ammonia, so-called waste nitrogen, by the special enzyme um, reactivity of which is uh, most important for the velocity of all the process and is regulated by the 
protein-rich diet, uh, convert ammonia and free ammonia and uh, carbon dioxide to the substance which is named carbon oil phosphate. Then the special enzymes um, convert it, is, it subsequently from ornithine to citrulline, then for the um, arginine succinate, uh, look that second molecule, second atom of nitrogen can be uh, brought by um, aspartate and fumarate that is formed after this can go to the citric acid cycle, you remember. Then arginine is formed and the special only for the liver tissue enzyme arginase will convert uh, arginine back to ornithine which can uh, go to the cycle back and urea. Urea is uh, transported by blood to the kidney where it is filtrated in urine. The most important source of free ammonia in the liver, this is, as we told already, transdeamination of amino acids. I remind you, these are subsequent reactions of all amino acids with alpha ketoglutarate, with the formation of glutamic acid and corresponding to the amino acids, keto acids. Keto acids, so carbon skeletons without nitrogen after this can be used for the catabolism, for example, can be incorporated into the oxidative processes or sometimes are used for the synthesis of important substances. Then, formated glutamic acid is converted to alpha-glutarate back by the enzyme glucose um, uh, glutamate dehydrogenase. Free ammonia used by uh, urea cycle for the synthesis of urea. Uh, alpha ketoglutarate can go um, to citric acid cycle or to the next reactions of transamination. This process we are naming indirect deamination of amino acids or transdeamination. For the synthesis of urea, not small quantity of ATP is necessary. You remember this. And what is the most important source of ATP in our body? Yes, this is the Krebs cycle or citric acid cycle, which is also described by Krebs. Same like urea cycle, urea cycle uh, a little bit earlier. So all uh, these two cycles are um, really, uh, really strongly related one to another, strongly bound one to another and determine the velocity and effectiveness of the hour um, metabolism acting. Due to this, very often you can uh, meet the characteristic of uh, these processes, like uh, about, uh, uh, like a mentioning of bicycle of Krebs. You can see that there is a connection between these two cycles. This is energy, this is aspartate that can be formed from the oxaloacetate, and this is also fumarate that can go back from the ornithine cycle to the citric acid cycle. Uh, as quickly as we are uh, moving with this um, Krebs bicycle, uh, as quickly we are leaving. Uh, one more um, cycle that is necessary to mention in uh, characteristic of protein metabolism in liver, this is glucose alanine cycle. Uh, relationships between the processes of um, transamine um, anaerobic glycolysis, uh, glycolysis generally, uh, transamination and urea synthesis. In muscles, um, after formation of pyruvate, the produced ammonia can be incorporated into the uh, alanine structure by reaction of uh, transamination, for example, or amine. Uh, usage of amino acids from the muscles. Alanine is a small uh, amino acid, very good water soluble, that can come after this with blood, same like lactate, to the um, liver, where reactions of transaminations are very active, and be converted back to the pyruvate with release of ammonia. Release of ammonia in liver is not dangerous, because here we have uh, processes of urea synthesis. Pyruvate after this, can be used for the glucose synthesis and glucose, same like in Cori cycle, after this can return to the muscles. So this is so-called additional uh, way how to transport ammonia from the peripheral tissues. It is characteristic for muscles and a little bit for enterocytes, cells of intestinum, they also uh, sometimes uh, produce uh, small quantity of alanine to uh, transport its ammonia to the liver for detoxication. 
uh, for other tissues, for example, for brain tissues, is more characteristic formation of glutamine and in less quantity asparagine. Amides of glutamate and aspartate do transport uh, this ammonia from the brain also to the liver for detoxication or directly like glutamine uh, to the kidney by the via the by the action of glutaminase, this ammonia will be revealed and excreted to the urine. Big function of liver, this is detoxication. Detoxication that can be done not only for the um, foreign compounds, pollutants, cancerogenic uh, and toxic compounds, but also uh, metabolism of a big quantity of our own compounds is related with the action of microsomal enzymes. I will remind you that there are no such uh, organelles in the cells which will be named microsomes. Microsomes, these are uh, particles that it is possible to obtain after degradation of endoplasmatic reticulum of the hepatocytes. Uh, if you will take hepatocytes uh, and uh, destroy them and centrifugate, you can obtain microsomal fraction via uh, pieces of membranes of endoplasmatic reticulum together with enzymes which were attached for them, formed uh, such a vesiculas that were named uh, microsomes. Enzymes that are present on these membranes involved into the process of um, metabolism of our own compounds and also exchanges of toxic compounds and uh, compounds that is difficultly uh, to excrete from our body due to their hydrophobicity. Um, we told with you what substance is uh, more toxic, hydrophobic or hydrophilic. Our um, excretion we are doing usually with sweat, with urine, so with fluids. So as uh, more uh, substance is hydrophilic, as quickly we can uh, excrete it from the body and uh, stop its toxic uh, action to our body. Uh, we are dividing the process of detoxication in liver to two phases. In the phase one, uh, preparative hydrolysis of course can be done and then uh, small reactions of modifications including hydroxylation, amination, uh, attachment of uh, tier group or carboxylic group can be done. But more often these are a reaction of hydroxylation. It's understandable that appearance of uh, electronegative oxygen will change the property of the substance. As a result of uh, first phase of detoxication, usually uh, hydrophilic properties of the substance must be a little bit increased. The most important enzyme that is involved into the uh, hydroxylation reaction, this is cytochrome P450. Um, and due to the function of liver, Detoxication is mainly a fu function of liver. Uh, the highest concentration of this enzyme you can find, of course, in microsomes, uh, in uh, hepatocytes, in uh, the plasmatic reticulum of uh, liver cells. Uh, cytochrome P450, this is the heme containing enzymes with high, uh, with, with very wide uh, substrate specificity, and uh, it catalyzes the incorporation of one. Uh, atom of oxygen into the substrate. So according to the mechanism of action, this enzyme is mono-oxygenase. Of course, the second atom of uh, oxygen must be neutralized. It will be converted to water and due to this mono-oxygenase system all the time are working with dehydrogenases. Don't forget about this. The second atom is usually converted to water. Here on this slide you can see the examples of uh, reactions that are catalyzed by the cytochrome uh, with the participation of cytochrome uh, P450 and uh, it's not only drug conversation to the substances that ca can be after this easily excreted from the body. This is also reactions of modification of our own products. Uh, these can be fatty acids, uh, these, these are steroid hormones modifications uh, that can be also with uh, high velocity done in the cortex of uh, suprarenal glands of course and not only hydroxylation reactions are uh, not, not only cytochrome p450 is used for reactions of hydroxylation you know also 
very uh, well known for your reaction, is a conversion of phenylalanine to tyrosine. Uh, differences on the presence of one age group. These are uh, also example of reactions that are performed by microsomal enzymes of liver. Uh, the phase two includes conjugation reaction. It means attachment to the compound, uh, especially for the excretion, something which is very hydrophilic and increase uh, hydrophility of the substance significantly. What reactions can be used? This is glucuronidation, uh, attachment of glucuronic acid. Glucuronic acid is a derivative of glucose, uh, and you know very good the substance uh, which is detoxified by glucuronidation. This is the bilirubin, uh, the resulting substance from him catabolism. Uh, but also other reactions can be done. This is uh, attachment of uh, sulfuric acid residues, acetylation, methylation, Conjugation with the pro, uh, uh, tripeptide glutathione, uh, amino acids like glycine, glutamic acid, uh, taurine residue of cysteine, and then the result of second phase is the remarkable increase of hydrophilic uh, properties of the substances, and this allow uh, for the uh, liver to excrete these substances by um, production is to the bile, secretion is to the bile and uh, through the bowel with feces, or uh, put it, this substance uh, in not very high concentration in the blood, which will be filtrated in kidney, and then the substance will be excreted with urine. Don't forget about participation of liver in pigment metabolism. In our red blood cells uh, we have a hemoglobin and uh, hemoglobin it's a complex protein that contains heme. Same with cytochrome P450, catalase, peroxidase and other enzymes. Uh, heme is interesting compound and uh, as in some other cases this is compound can be synthesized in our body but cannot be completely catabolized for CO2 and water. Uh, after this destruction, after hemolysis of the old erythrocytes, uh, hemoglobin is coming to the cells of reticular and telia system where it is converted to a substance which is named bilirubin through some stages. Bilirubin is compound toxic, uh, non-soluble. Uh, we it, is mu it must be transported from reticular and the cells of all of the body to the liver for its detoxication, and it can be done in the complex with uh, albumin. This complex of uh, lipid soluble, water insoluble bilirubin that is formed from uh, inside of reticular and the system is named uh, indirect bilirubin or unconjugated or free bilirubin. It is not free from albumin, but it is free from glucuronic acid still. Uh, it is indirect because we cannot do the uh, direct reaction to find it, to estimate its quantity. At first, we need to precipitate proteins. So due to this indirect reaction, this bilirubin is named indirect. Unconjugated bilirubin with the help of albumin is transported to liver where it is converted to diglucuronide. Uh, with the help of the special enzyme, glucuronyl transferase, you know this already. And this bilirubin, due to the specific structure of liver, I show you this and remind you this about triads and about the special structure of liver, uh, partly can also come to the blood. Due to this, we have both fractions of bilirubin, indirect and direct, in our uh, blood normally. Uh, the quantity of this uh, fractions of bilirubin and their balance can be changed in case of jaundice, yes, in case of excessive hemolysis or in inflammation of parenchyma cells of uh, liver or uh, obstruction of bile ducts, uh, three types of jaundice we discussed already uh, during the classes. Then uh, bilirubin is excreted together with the bile to the intestinal where it is converted to some colorless, colorless uh, pigments colorless pigments is interesting uh, but you must know and remember that urobilinogen or mesobilinogen which is formed in the 
middle parts of intestinum, it is really colorless, so the name pigment is uh, very strange for it. It's a problem of nomenclature. Uh, I told you about enterohepatic circulation, so the part of urobilinogen already converted bilirubin to it uh, can be reabsorbed in the intestinum and return to the liver. Normally, working liver is not allowed to urobilinogen go to the general circulation. It must be cut to mono and Perose by a uh, very good working liver. So, on this part of urobilinogen can be uh, transported by intestinum till the rectum and then converted to stercabilinogen. And stercabilin, it's a normal pigment of our feces, it is brown, and normal color of feces is brown. But in the lowest part of rectum, there is a um, uh, so call it portal caval anastomosis. It's, it's anastomosis between portal system and uh, system of vena cava inferior. And part of the can be absorbed at this moment and go to the general circulation. It, it, is, it will go without destruction to the kidney where it is filtrated and gives the light yellow color to our um, urine due to the presence in very, very small quantities. So, the pigment of feces and uh, urine is the same, this is tercabilin. Urabilinogen, real urabilinogen, mesabilinogen, from the middle part of intestine, can go to the urine only in pathological states where liver is not normally working. It is characteristic mainly for the situation with parenchymatous jaundice, with hepatitis, uh, more often viral, uh, or sometimes uh, caused by chemicals. Uh, very short about uh, vitamin metabolism in liver. Uh, we need to mention that, uh, for example, active form of vitamin D must be formed in liver. These are also reactions of hydroxylation. We talked about this type of this reaction in liver. Uh, the precursor of vitamin D is coming to the body or synthesized in the, our skin under the action of ultraviolet uh, light. Uh, but after this, in, first time uh, in kidney in, and uh, then in uh, liver or at positions of uh, 21, 1 and 24, they must be hydroxylated to be calcitriol. It means th three hydroxylic group must be formed in them to be activated and to be converted to uh, active vitamin D. So liver is participated. Uh, also, formation of vitamin A from the precursors, from the carotenoids, also can be done in liver. Depot of B12 and a little bit folic acid can be formed in liver because uh, cyanocobalamine, this is water soluble vitamin, vitamin from the water soluble, soluble vitamins group, but it is really very. Uh, not very good water soluble compounds. We have special transported proteins for them, and also liver can uh, serve as a depot of this vitamin. Due to this um, development of deficiency of B12, usually is not immediately after formation of the conditions for this. Uh, for example, um, in case of uh, gastroectomy, uh, surgical operation, we are all the stomach will be taken away and uh, intrinsic factor of castle will not be produced, uh, dietary B12 cannot be absorbed. But uh, after gastrectomy, uh, pernicious anemia can develop after one or two years because in our liver we have a depot of B12. Uh, other vitamins cannot be also stored like uh, fat soluble vitamin E. And what is important, put attention that active forms of, uh, for the active coenzyme forms for the vitamins from the group B also require different changes. For example, for, for B1, timing must be converted to TDP, so it must be phosphorylated. And these reactions are also performed in Liban. Uh, I hope that you understood that uh, according to all of this function, uh, liver is possible to name our metabolic heart. It's my opinion. Uh, you should 
agree with me, I, I think. And uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, continue to study and uh, stay safe. Goodbye.